Jacob. Oh, Jacob Marley, tell me more. Speak to comfort me, Jacob. I have none to give. It comes from other regions, Debonese or Scrooge, and it's conveyed by other ministers to other kinds of men. Nor can I tell you what I would. A very little more is all permitted to me. I cannot rest. I cannot stay. I cannot linger anywhere. My spirit never walked beyond our counting house. Mark me. In life, my spirit never rode beyond the narrow limits of our money-changing hole, and weary journeys lie before me. You must have been very slow about it, Jacob. Slow? Seven years dead and traveling all the time. The whole time. No rest. No peace. Incessant torture of remorse. You travel fast? On the wings of the wind. You might have got over a great quality of ground in seven years. Oh, 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 oh. But you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business? Mankind was my business. The common welfare was my business. Charity, mercy, forbearance, and benevolence were all my business. The dealings of my trade were but a drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business. At this time of the rolling year, I suffer most. Why did I walk through the crowds of fellow beings with my eyes turned down and never raise them to that blessed star which led the wise men to a poor abode? Were there no poor homes to which its light could have conducted me? <laughs> Hear me. My time is nearly gone. I will, but don't be hard upon me. Don't be flowery, Jacob, pray. There is no light part of my penance. I am here tonight to warn you that you have yet a chance and hope of escaping my fate, a chance and hope of my procuring, Ebenezer. You will be haunted by three spirits. Is that the chance and hope you've mentioned, Jacob? It is. I... Uh... Uh, I think I'd rather not. Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first tomorrow when the bell tolls one. Couldn't I take them all at once and have it over, Jacob? Expect the second on the next night at the same hour. The third upon the next night when the last stroke of twelve has ceased to vibrate. Look to see me no more and look that for your own sake. You remember what has passed between us. When Scrooge awoke, it was so dark that looking out of bed, he could scarcely distinguish the transparent window from the opaque walls of his chamber. He was endeavoring to pierce the darkness with his fair eyes when the chimes of a neighboring church struck the four quarters, so he listened for all the four. Why, it is impossible that I can have slept through a whole day and fall into another night. It is impossible that anything has happened to the sun. And this is twelve at noon. Was it a dream or not? A quarter past, half past, a quarter to it, the hour itself, and nothing else. Are you the spirit whose coming was foretold to me? I am. Who and what are you? I'm the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. Rise and walk with me. I am immortal and liable to fall. Bear by the touch of my hand there, and you shall be upheld in more than this. Good heavens! I was bred in this place. I was a boy here. You recollect the way? Remember it. I could walk it blindfolded. Strange to have forgotten it for so many years. Let us go on. The school is not quite deserted. A solitary child neglected by friends. 
is left there still. I know. <laughs> Let us see another Christmas. I have come to bring you home, dear brother. To bring you home, home, home. Home, little fan? Yes, home for good and all. Home forever and ever. Father is so much kinder than he used to be. My home's like heaven. He spoke so gently to me one dear night when I was going to bed that I was not afraid to ask him once more if he might come home. And he said, yes, you should. And send me in a coach to bring you. And you're to be a man. And are never to come back here. But first, we're to be together all the Christmas long and have the merriest time in the world. You're quite a woman, little fan. Always a delicate creature whom a breath might have withered. But she had a large heart. So she had. You're right, I will not gainsay it, spirit. God forbid. She died a young woman and it had, as I think, children. One child. Who? Your nephew, Fred. Yes. Do you recognize this place? No, it, I was apprenticed here. Why, it's old Fezziwig. Bless his heart, it's Fezziwig alive again. Yo-ho here, Ebenezer, Dick. Dick Wilkins, to be sure. Bless me, yes, there he is. He was very much attached to me, was Dick. Poor Dick, dear, dear. Yo-ho, my boys, no more work tonight. Christmas Eve, Dick. Christmas, Ebenezer. Hilly ho clear my ways, lads. And let's have lots of room here. Hilly ho Dick, chirrup, Ebenezer. We're going to have a ball. A small matter to make these silly folks so full of gratitude. Small? Why, is it not? He has spent but a few pounds in your mortal money. Three or four, perhaps. Is that so much that he deserves his praise? It isn't that. It isn't that, spirit. He has the power to render us happy or unhappy, to make our service light or burdensome, a pleasure or a toil. Say that his power lies in words and looks, in things so slight and insignificant that it is possible to add or count him up. What then? The happiness he gives is quite as great as if it cost a fortune. What is the matter? Nothing particular. Something, I think. No, no, I should like to be able to say a word or two to my clerk just now. That's all. My time goes short. Quick. It matters little to you, very little. Another idol has displaced me, and if it can cheer and comfort you in time to come, as I would have tried to do, I have no just cause to grieve. What idol has displaced you? A golden one. This is the even-handed dealing of the world. There is nothing on which it is so hard as poverty, and there is nothing it professes to condemn with such severity as the pursuit of wealth. You fear the world too much. All your hopes have merged into the hope of being beyond the chance of its sordid reproach. I have seen your nobler aspirations fall off one by one into the master passion. Gain engrosses you, have I not? What then? Even if I have grown so much wiser, what then? I am not changed towards you. Our contract is an old one. It was made when we were both poor and content to be so. Until in good season, when we could improve our worldly fortune by our patient industry. You are changed. When it was made, you were another man. I was a boy. Your own feeling tells you that you were not what you were. I am. That which promised happiness when we were one in heart is fraught with misery now that we are two. How often and how keenly I have thought of this, I will not say. It is enough that I have thought of it and can release you. Have I ever sought release? In words, no, never. In what then? In a change of nature, in an altered spirit, in another atmosphere of life, another hope is its great end. In everything that made my love any worth or value in your sight, if this has ever been between us? Tell me, would you seek me out and try me with me now? Ah, uh, no. I would gladly think otherwise if I could. Heaven knows. When I have learned a truth like this, I know how strong and irresistible it must be. But if you were free today, tomorrow, yesterday, 
Did I even I believe you that you would choose a dowerless girl, you who in your very confidence with her weigh everything by gain, or choosing her if for a moment you were false enough to your own guiding principle to do so? Do I not know that your repentance and regret would surely follow? I do, and I release you with a full heart for the love of him you once were. You may, the memory of what is past half makes me hope you will have pain in this. A very, very brief time, and you will dismiss the recollection of it, gladly as an unprofitable dream, from which it happened well that you awoke. May you be happy in the life you have chosen! Spirit, show me no more. Conduct me home. Why do you delight to torture me? These are but shadows of things that have been. Do not blame me. They are what they are. No more, no more. I don't wish to see it. Show me no more.